So the software-defined radio dev room has been um, at Fosdem for multiple years now. This is the, um, I think this is the fifth run that we're doing, and um, and it's always been a huge success. So there's um, just a lot. Like this room usually fills up pretty quickly. By by the time the second or third talk is happening, it's usually full, and then it stays full until the end. And it actually stays full until the end. So it's not like we finish at 4.30 because we ran out of presentations. So that's never happened. And, um, and it's not going to happen this year either. So I'm very, very happy about all of that. Um, now, what I'm particularly happy about is like just the, the spectrum of, of talks. So <clears throat> I'm, as you see, I'm, I actually prepared an intro talk this, this, this time. So this is a screenshot from the website, um, the, the current schedule. And this is actually useful information because this is what we'll be talking about. But what I wanted to highlight is like where all these people are coming from and what, what, um, what domains. So we have, um, I've sort of like sorted them by topics. And you can already see just based on the topics, there's like a very, uh, you know, big variety of talks. And it's all under sort of the big umbrella of software-defined radio. So we have, um, you know, actual sort of wireless comms and DSP problems, but there's also like some community-related talks. Um, in, InfoSec security is in here. Um, you know, hardware. We usually had more hardware talks, but we have at least one this year. So we've never had zero. So that's very cool. Um, education is something that I'm personally very passionate about. <clears throat> so I'm very happy that we have talks on that topic as well. But there's another way that you can look at this presentation. Uh, sorry, this uh, list of speakers, and that is trying to see where they come from. So I'm going to turn around now. And this is also something I'm very happy about. So we have sort of non-profit organization. We just have like straight up, you know, enthusiasts, the people who do something completely unrelated to SDR in their day job, but they're still interested, so they come here and talk about it. Um, we have people who sort of are government-affiliated, um, academia-affiliated, and there's a bit of an overlap there. I realize that people from industry, you know, who get, get actually sent here by their employers. And, um, yeah, I, I just think that's great. And that's really what makes this dev room so special. So this is not a GNU Radio conference. This is also not a Osmo Com conference or something like that. This is like everything that is falls under sort of the the common intersection between um, radio-related topics and free software is like welcome in this dev room, and then we all get together. And I think um, that's not not that's cool, but it's also important because um, this is a, a forum where we can share not only ideas but also sort of project plans and and um, that way um, can avoid you know, reinventing the wheel. Because one of the things about um, open source and free software development is it, it is true that most of it is actually these days paid work. But it is still work that is typically done by people who are passionate about things. So if you sort of burn like, that enthusiasm and energy by reinventing the same thing twice, like, you've, you've just wasted a lot of you know, productivity. <clears throat> so I really hope that you can um, sorry. I really hope that we can use uh, you know, the dev room as, as we do every year to just, you know, exchange ideas about all these domains. And uh, yeah, and I, I just think it's, it's a great, great opportunity. And we don't really have any other venue like this. So uh, that's another reason where I'm so glad that we, we, we keep doing it. OK. I actually did prepare a couple of slides, but I'm going to have to blast through them now because um, <laughs> I was late. Um, but I still think they're interesting, so I'm just going to like quickly mention there's a couple of like interesting highlights that happened in the last year so and this is a slide I had to put in like very recently so because like the GNU radio organization while it's you know when I said this is not a GNU radio conference like GNU radio is still a big uh, important project in the whole um, free software software radio domain so um, yeah there was a recent change in the sort of leadership there were emails out on the mailing list Ben explained it all and Ben of course is still like in charge of the project but Jonathan Corgan stepped down and we, you know, we used the opportunity to get a couple of people more involved. So among others, Marcus, for example, and Andre, I saw him somewhere. Oh, there. Um, and um, yeah, there's a couple of other people. Derek, is Derek here? Not yet. A couple of people, I listed them here, will become more active and you know, will have more defined roles going forward. So this is, um, you know, it's, it's sad to see people leave, like Jonathan, who's been like, putting in a lot of work and, and money over the years, but it's, it's also a natural cause of you know, events. So we're, we're glad that we can sort of handle it in an you know, organized fashion. So that's one thing. And uh, um, speaking of events, we did have GNU Radio Conference um, 2017, which because we don't have this sort of um, 
general SDR conference, like GRCon has become a little like that. So it used to be just you know, radio topics, and now it's a lot more just like you know software radio related topics. It's still mostly focused on Gnu radio, but like the amount of people that come are great. And like this event, like what I like most about GRCon is that we have this big mix of like people who come from hackerspaces, but then also like big companies who you know just have to go to this conference because it's become like de facto um, like SDR like conference. Yeah. And, Here's a couple of screenshots because we have all the videos up, uploaded from uh, Fearless Leader Ben and our uh, new maintainer Marcus. Um, there was the DARPA hack, I'm not going to talk about that because we have an entire talk about it. But I did want to put it on these slides because I think it's an important, ev an important event for, for many reasons. Um, one of those reasons is the fact that the, it's, it's a statement that the U.S. government has sort of acknowledged the fact that this whole open source thing is, is important and it's worth... Uh, investing money in. But as I said, Tom will talk about that. <clears throat> SDR Academy is part of the Ham Radio Conference in Germany. Um, it's not a huge event, but what I like about that is that it's sort of, it's an active step from the Ham Radio community to get closer to the SDR community. And that's like, those two communities have been very separate for a long time for no good reason. Um, other than like the people who join those communities are typically from different backgrounds. Those videos are also up, up uh, online. Okay, and there was plenty of other events. I just picked like several. Um, there's, there's like local small events. Uh, Roland Schwartz Engineering Competition I thought was worth mentioning because this is just uh, this was a fantastic um, event organized by a company that we haven't really seen in this this domain before. Um, and it, yeah, it's just look it up. It's it's pretty cool. Um, you know, CCC, the Congress is, you know, always has SDR-related content and plenty of others. Um, I, I started making a comprehensive list of everyone who's now active in the SDR domain. I just gave up eventually. It's just too many. And that's a good thing. Um, and not only are these, like, lots of different groups, but also there's a lot of overlap. So, for example, these guys use GNU Radio. They do their own thing, and they have a presentation later. But they said, okay, like, the whole SDR stuff, like, that's the solved problem. We're going to latch onto that. So... The, the, this is not a competition between groups. This is just like a, an expanding space of enthusiasts in, in different, different domains. <clears throat> we have some new hardware. Robin will talk about Pluto. Um, Lime SDI, there's no representative, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, <clears throat> so Edis Research is gonna, is, will be releasing another product uh, in the next two weeks. Um, I probably forgot some here, but that's also interesting to see that we have like a much um, bigger spectrum of available options other than just like USUPs and HLSTRs, although of course you should all buy USUPs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, finally, don't be like... <laughs> um, th there's one thing that I quickly wanted to mention. So we, have, we used to have a panel, and I, I, didn't, I, I think they usually went well, but they took up a full hour and you know, they took away from, from talks. This year we don't have a panel, we have an interactive half hour at the end. Um, so if you just want to like show off stuff or just ask people a question, that's a good um, place to do that. And yeah, again, this is the schedule. So we'll have a Tom first, then John Michel, and then myself again. Um, and then yeah, you can see the rest. Um, so there's no break here. If you want to have lunch, you just like pick one of the talks you are least interested in, uh, and then use that. Um, this room, as I said, typically fills up. So. If you leave, you might not be able to go back in. Remember, we have like very strict rules, like with, um, with respect to you know fire regulations and all of that. So we have to stick to those. Um, but we can like squeeze a small number of people in the in the corners, like. But like, like I'd say, like fullness like this, we could probably add another twenty people or so. But then it's then that's it. Like so, there's no guarantee that you can come back in. But then fresh air is also a nice thing. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome all the speakers. I'm just going to hand off to Tom. Right now, wait to see us.